All right, so today we're going to talk about five things all great companies do with cash. The reason why this is important because there's a formula or framework that great companies have. Um, you don't have to create something new. Great companies follow these frameworks and this is what they do with their cash. And this is then becomes a representation of management, right? Management is a focal point when you're investing in the stock. You should always understand a company with great management is a company that can make you money for a long, long time. And I'll do another video breaking down good management, but these five things is what great companies do with money. And so what we'll do is at the end of this, I'll show you a company or I'll highlight a company that I like that does these things with their bread. So before we get into it, man, I want you to like and subscribe to the channel, share it out, because it's gonna be some great information for you. Let's dig into it. So it's all about cash allocation. All in the, in the investing world, they will call it uh, asset allocation. I like to look for investment opportunities, and this is how management brings extreme and immense value to us as shareholders. So one of the first things a company does with their money is they invest in new products and services, which comes under research and development. Um, and they use that under a term when you're looking at the financials is called CapEx. Now, you don't want a company that's always spending a lot of money on research and development. You want to find a company that's finding that balance because if a company has to consistently create new products all the time, that's not a sustainable business. So a great company that has research and development. Now, whether you like it or not, Apple does spend money on research and development which is why we can say when Apple does drop something, they execute it at a high level. So right now, the Vision Pros, they worked a lot. They worked a long time on those Vision Pros. But check this out. The Vision Pro, and don't get me wrong, y'all know I rock with Mark Zuckerberg, but the Vision Pro, Pro compared to the Oculus is a whole nother world. Right. Research and development. When Apple came out with the iPod. Right. It was different. Right. When it came out with the iPhone, it was different. When it came out the watch, it was different. When it came out with the air, the wireless air, it was different. Now, do they have an innovation issue as of right now? 100 percent. The Vision Pro is definitely their newest thing. But the money that they spend on research and development, when they drop a product, it is crazy. And think about this. How many times have Android dropped the, the folding phone? Like they've dropped it multiple times. Why? Because it kept breaking. It kept, you know what I'm saying? It kept, it kept finding flaws in it. The one thing Apple will do is when they drop something, it's going to be an amazing product. We know that. Now, again, this is not an Apple Android conversation. I'm not in that because they both make money on all of us. So don't get in the comments and argue about that. Just think about that and don't, don't respond to me from that from an emotional perspective, right? That's the number one thing the company can do with money is research and development and then they can put that under what's called cap ass because now they can easily write that off, right? And that is what we call like an organic investment opportunity, right? That is an organic investment opportunity. Why? Because the company is now searching within the company, building products and services within the company that then increases the value of the company, which then increases shareholder value, which is what we want, right? And so the next thing is a company can do is acquire other companies. This falls in under what's called investment opportunities. Acquiring other companies is always, you know, an investment opportunity for a brand. And so what we like in that is, think about this, no other company had acquired more companies than Facebook or Meta. No other company. They was, they was acquiring companies. That's how we get Instagram and that's how we get so many other things, right? Meta is amazing at acquiring companies. So we call this our uh, outside investment opportunities. Revenue for us, we want to consistently see a company increasing its revenue. But what we want to understand is when a company is acquiring or bringing in another company or buying another company, how does that impact revenue and bottom line? So how does it impact revenue and how does it impact profit? Again, the second opportunity, the second great thing that a company does with money is it acquires other companies. Now, it'll acquire a company that is similar to what it's due. Let's talk about it too. NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA has inquired, acquired like three more artificial intelligence companies or companies that can help them with that, whether it's Synopsis, whether it's Ansys, whether it's Soundhound, right? They are acquiring other companies 
in their field that they may not do, but they seek and add value to the brand, right? And that's how companies become big conglomerates. So the number two is acquiring other companies. Number three, paying off debt. Now, I would like to do two and three. I would like to swap those out. Um, two and three, they can be interchangeable because if a company doesn't have a lot of debt, then it's okay, right? Because most companies will operate debt, operate with debt because it's free money. It's money they get to use, borrow, especially if they got a good credit rating, like an AA or a triple A, right? They can go borrow some money at a low rate without using their money to go invest, buy another company, and then let the operations from that company pay off that debt. That's what a lot of companies do. So I want to talk to you about that, right? What this does is when a company pays off debt, it reduces the interest expense. So the interest expense is the interest that they paying on the debt. So you go get a loan from a house. You will get a loan on a house. Those interest payments. So what most people do when they buy a house, when they pay double or they pay month, they say, look, put this on the interest, put this on the principal. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're doing. You paying down that debt. You taking that right there but also you are financially making a strong company stronger so a company that's paying down debt like general electric right that ceo came in they put a new ceo in and guess what that company did he paid down a hundred million dollars worth of debt that is insane right he paid down a lot of that debt i'm sorry a hundred billion dollars worth of debt he paid that debt down also i got to give it to him gm Right, that company was 70 something billion dollars in debt. That GM, they had a new CEO. Guess what that company did in one year? Paid down $10 billion of debt. One of the ways he did that, cut companies that wasn't making money. Right, so getting rid of certain assets that's actually not adding to the business or taking away from the business or actually cannibalizing the business. So the number three way is paying down debt. Why? Because it reduces, um, it reduces debt. It increases the company's financial position. It strengthens the ability to watch this, acquire other companies, right? Or take market share from their companies, um, from their competitors. So that is always another great thing. Number four on the list is the company can buy back shares. Now, number one, research and development, that's internal growth. Researching ideas, concepts, and developing those, those cost money. That's internal growth organically. External growth is the acquisition of a company, bringing them in and putting them under the umbrella, right? Reducing debt is internal value property. That is great. Now, number four is not necessarily a organic growth perspective because what it does is when you buy back shares, you're taking shares off the market. Here's my key thing in this. You can tell a great management company, not just when they buy back shares, but when they buy back shares at a discounted price. Right. One of the things I often look at is a company can have a, you know, four billion dollar share buyback. But when are they buying back the shares? Right. If they buy back the shares while the shares are already high, then, you know, one thing, man, they cooking for themselves. Right. They keeping the stock going up for themselves. A great company is going to buy back shares when the company is at a discounted price or when a company is going through a pullback or something like that. They'll deploy those hundreds of million dollars so that can bring the stock back up. Right. Because they've been owning the stocks for so long, we already know one thing that they'll do is do what? If you buying it at a higher price, you inflate the price, you know, you can sell off at that higher price. So we definitely do not want that. And the last one is paying dividends. So we see companies that have increased their dividend for long periods of time or pay dividend. We've just seen a company like Facebook do what? Start to pay dividends. We like that. I don't have a problem with that. Whether a company pays dividends or not is not a deal breaker for me. But in that dividend payment, I do want to see those dividends on um, that payout ratio under 60% because I know they still got room to build that brand and build that. So I love that. And paying dividends is a great way for a company that's already solidified to position us and to help us as shareholders feel comfortable about owning this company, right? And what people don't know is um, NVIDIA pays a dividend, Apple, Microsoft. So all, a lot of your tech companies do pay dividends, right? But what happens is with these, all these things, except for actually... Uh, the share buyback, the acquisition of companies, the paying down debt, the, all of this increases our return on invested capital. And we need that because this helps us become financially a better, stronger, sustainable, powerful company.
So those are the five things that companies can do. They can buy backs. They can do research and development. They can acquire companies. They can pay down debt. They can buy back shares and they can re uh, pay us dividends. A company that I love that's in that space is 100 percent meta. Right. Because the company has zero debt. The company always acquires other companies. You spend tons amount of money on research and development. They always do share buybacks and they just started paying us dividends. And Meta has a great return on invested capital. So that's why Meta is definitely one of my biggest positions of all times. It's not going down. I'm only looking to get more. My goal is to have at least 2,500 shares of Meta over the next two years, man. So I hope y'all like this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe if you liked it. Also tell us in the comments uh, what type of content that you like from us. What more do you want to see from us? Because we want to definitely serve y'all at a high level. And last but not least, man, make sure you check out Trapping Tuesdays each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on the Wall Eastern on the Wall Street Looks Like Us and our network. Also, all podcast platforms have our audio experience. Make sure you download it. Put it on auto download. Make sure you review it. Make sure you share it, man. It's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper. I'm out.